here. I am very grateful for the invitation. Uh, I think it's my last talk uh, representing Oxford. I'll, I'll go back to this point later. Um, by the way, Wolfgang is also an, an associate member of Nuffield College, uh, among various other. I, I think it adds a couple of years to your life expectancy. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the title is A Great Div Divergence in Fertility, and I'll start from history. So we heard uh, about the historical demography thesis of Wolfgang, of kind of family origin, and the Great Divergence is a, is a catchword in uh, mostly in economic history now. And uh, the basic idea is this is the process of economic growth in the West when the West diverged from other societies with uh, long-term consequences still visible today. So this is the great divergence. Uh, there's a spending error there. Uh, this is the great divergence in Europe, which is not called the great divergence, we'll see later, but it's called the little divergence. Uh, the interesting thing in this graph is that uh, this is from Bob Allen, also from Nuffield uh, College. We have uh, Milan and Vienna, so um, I'm very glad to find this one. And, uh, they, I mean, what, it used to be that Italy was running, uh, it was the lighthouse of the world, I mean, uh, until, let's say, Renaissance. Uh, so if you continue Milan a little bit back, you can imagine how great was that place, and then things changed. So this is the divergence in Europe. Of course, these are nominal wages, you can have different measures, uh, these are only the specific cities, but the bottom line was that UK and the Netherlands were the winners of the first wave of globalization and that made them diverge from uh, uh, places like Italy, Austria or uh, France. Uh, this is the great divergence per se in a table also from uh, Steve Broadberry, who happens to be a Nuffield, uh, on GDP per capita and uh, the bottom line idea is that China was more or less as rich as the West before the Industrial Revolution, and it becomes much poorer, let's say China, but India, then there's no data before. It becomes much poorer as a consequence of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Industrial Revolution. Okay, so I won't talk about this, but I will talk about low fertility, but with, it, with the same spirit. The first thing is that it may be very early to understand what's going on, even in fertility. This is the little divergence in Europe. So this seems to be a diverging pattern where some societies go down and others go up. And this is what happens in the, in the long term uh, uh, and until the First World War where there is no catch up. Yeah, basically. <laughs> They're, they're all, okay, Milan is still lagging behind, but I, I swear to you that now GDP per capita is fine there. <laughs> so sometimes when we speak about divergence and convergence, time, we, we really need to wait a little bit of time to see what's going on. So let me go to low fertility now. And, and my focus will be on post-transitional Fertility, replacement, or any, anything that you want to attach close to replacement versus lowest low, very low, ultra low. I think ultra low is the, is the Lutz version. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was uh, in your papers that we had this uh, definition first. Um, and let me speak about theories, and I simply categorize ideas in two simple ways. Some theories uh, see post-transitional fertility as converging to a similar pattern. Let's say in the whole world, I won't touch the whole world, but I will just focus on low fertility societies. Some theories see divergence or persistent differences across societies. Okay, that's, that's a simple classification. There can be other classification of fertility theories. Okay, convergence theories, I, I put three there. Two theories are, let's say, unconditional convergence ideas. 
second demographic transition and gender revolution. Let's say I use the word theory in a generic sense. And then uh, what I term uh, conditional convergence theory uh, linked to the emergence of procyclical pro -cyclical fertility. Um, okay, second demographic transition. I think there are at least two versions. There is no wrong study here. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, elect uh, Thomas as the representative. Okay, the earlier version, basically, the, the idea was that the, the, the second demographic transition brought the end of the Child King era and sub-replacement fertility. So, those who read I think rightly the first set of papers say, oh yes, the higher the second demographic transition is reaching a country, the lower fertility should be. And this is actually written more or less in the original uh, second demographic transition paper. In a, in a, a kind of the standard paradigm uh, shift uh, defense here, the later bits, I think also prompted by uh, Thomas' uh, version, in the later reaction, uh, Ron uh, has basically pointed to the idea of two effects of the second demographic transition, so, I mean, you don't need to, I mean, this is from the PDR type, but basically there are some negative effects on fertility and some positive effects on fertility, so the second demographic transition means postponement, but also recuperation, and in the end, you, you really don't know what's going on. Uh, I think what is uncontested is that the idea of SDT sees ideational change as driving demographic behavior, and fertility in particular, and push, it pushes all societies towards the same direction. From here, all the recent work on Latin America and, uh, and uh, Southeast Asia, Europe, East Asia in particular. So the second demographic transition, I dare to say, it's a convergence idea. And I'm sure, I'm sure there will be some caveats if you are SDT uh, pure, but if you, if you take the idea seriously, it has to be a convergence idea. Okay, arrival or let's say complementary convergence idea, the idea that uh, gender revolution is changing our world in various ways, for instance, in the paper with Josta, it's not the only one where basically there's, a, there's some exogenous kick, maybe the pill, maybe women's educational expansion, which is not necessarily driven by any family concern, but it's maybe driven by the idea that educational expansion is good, Wolfgang teaches us, and if you have educational expansion, then gender discrimination is bad. So in principle, this has nothing to do with family except for the idea that gender discrimination in education is bad. But that may be enough to trigger changes that are uh, kind of everlasting, and uh, in, the, in the nice way, uh, Goldschild, uh, uh, Bernard, and Lappegor have, uh, have this, I mean, it's mostly Frank Goldschild's idea, uh, that has two, two phases of the gender revolution. In the first one, women become a little bit like men, entering the labor market, behave like men in the labor market. And the second one, men start becoming like, old style women and enter the household sphere. Okay, the, the bottom line is the whole world is assumed to converge to ideally a gender egalitarian uh, sphere and uh, this is a potential idea. Okay, fertility goes down a little bit when, the, when we are in the middle of this gender revolution but then goes back when equality or uh, egalitarian is bad. So I will say, and uh, this is very easily criticized, for instance, there's a piece by Churling, uh, I'm honored to be uh, criticized by Churling on PDR, criticizing two pieces and saying, oh, this is a convergent story. First, you don't know America, which is probably true. I mean, maybe that's true for Frank Goldschild, uh, because America is exceptional, different from anyone else which was one idea fought by Ron on the SDT spreading to America 
except now Trump is giving us a bit of trouble, but uh, of course there's, there's probably not enough SDT. But the, the general idea, this is spreading across the world. And uh, of course, if this is convergence, it may be too early to call it now. Uh, I think some uh, recent work by uh, Thomas Group is also uh, criticizing this approach. And then my response uh, when it was presented on our own turf in Oxford, they said, oh, it's too early to say when there's, there's this convergence. Okay, so convergence number two. Uh, I think in a sense the two ideas are the SDT and the gender revolution are related, but clearly have different narratives. A third convergence idea may be seen this way as conditional convergence. Okay, if fertility is becoming related to general economic well-being, be i.e. becomes procyclical after the transition, basically fertility can converge if the economic well-being converges. So in a sense, this would be seen as a conditional convergence narrative if societies are doing equally well, then maybe uh, fertility may come. So three ideas of a converging fertility, one of which is conditional. The, the, the first two are unconditional. Ideational change cannot be stopped. It's about, it's a modernization theory. And gender equality cannot be stopped. I mean, it can, as I say, that's, that's the whole idea. <coughs> Okay, then it's easier to say what are the contrasting points. Persistent di differences or divergence theories. Uh, I have two sort of unconditional ones. Cultural differences, persistent cultural differences and low fertility trap, and one that is conditional divergence idea. Okay, on uh, cultural differences, uh, there's, uh, I mean, there's some relatively um, long-standing tradition of the idea that societies will never converge to a same family pattern because culture is different and globalization and additional change and gender equality cannot do that. Uh, a recent version, uh, maybe Chris Wilson has uh, as the idea that the, the demographic regime are stable over time and there, there will be four of them in the long term uh, independently of what's going on. And uh, in, in, soci uh, kind of in sociology, Goran Terborn has the, the idea that uh, the world will have these five or six I mean, family patterns and they will persist in the long term, they will never converge. Uh, even if I'm presenting theories, I start also to challenge them. Of course, one of the challenge of these ideas is that uh, they struggle with the fact that uh, strong, where families were strong, fertility was becoming low, which is a little bit of a problem. Okay, second, I cannot explain that because uh, I cannot dare to explain the low fertility trap hypothesis uh, of Wolfgang, uh, I think, uh, bigger than Maria Rita, but the idea is, is that when one society goes to a low fertility path, or let's say very low fertility path, there are self-sustaining mechanisms that prevent from going back. And they cite McDonald's as, as giving the magic threshold as 1.5. So it's a nice divergence idea because it's dynamic, uh, and basically it predicts there are two sustainable patterns. Um, in some variation of that, one tries to explain why there will be sub, uh, kind of sustained differences, and you could say maybe these differences are conditional on long-standing cultural uh, factors. So gender equality is something that is hard to change in terms of attitude and may hamper, let's say, convergence, and in, in the paper with... Uh, Annie Oswe and uh, Lea Pessin, we, we look at trust of, let's say, social capital in terms of generalized trust. Okay, some tests, then this is very basic, couple of regressions to uh, graphs using the human 
fertility database. Just one, one short thing has been mentioned yesterday also by Jesus. In the literature, there's basically the idea of beta convergence and sigma convergence. Beta convergence is about the fact that societies that start high may have the strongest decline, and that will bring beta convergence, and sigma convergence is about decreasing uh, differences across societies. So I made a, and there's a couple of other papers, there was a whole PAA session where half of the papers, including uh, the Vienna paper, were a, a little bit looking at that. Uh, and so here the analysis I, I'm doing, because I don't have much time, on the human fertility database, I used the hated uh, period TFR, but it's still published on the human fertility database, but I also use a cohort, uh, uh, cumulative cohort fertility for countries for which the same set of years can be identified and you see a list of countries, so basically for kind of post-transitional countries, uh, although it may not be all, all of them, those are, I, I found in the database. So the bottom line, is there convergence or persistence? Differences. Is there any sign of a great divergence? Um, of course, here the tail seems to be convergence, if we take the same countries from 1960 to 2014. But if I select a subgroup of countries and I zoom to the last period, then I see sort of the low fertility trap idea. So these countries are staying up, or maybe with some roller coaster for for Sweden, and they tend to be close to whatever would be optimal fertility. And these other countries get down and they seem not to be able to recover from 1.5. Okay. This is a period of far. What if you look at beta convergence, so the idea that there is some convergence, countries starting high will tend to have the quickest decline, and the evidence is that there is some beta convergence, you, you shouldn't really compare the coefficients uh, here, but the basic idea is that a negative co coefficient is implying beta convergence, which is a very mild requirement. We saw that yesterday in a graph by Jesus. So countries starting high on fertility will tend to have the, high for, the, the quicker fertility decline, and that is true for this group of countries also if we take uh, several sub -years. Uh, what about sigma convergence, which is, say, countries' uh, differences are declining over time between country differences, and the bottom line is that there's, there's probably two periods here, the first period up to 1980, where there's been sigma convergence, declining differences, and then if we look at later, this is period if you look at later, and here is the zoom. What is sigma convergence? Sigma convergence is basic, okay, is basically looking at standard deviation or coefficient of variation of fertility between countries. It's a very simple standard deviation of 21 data points. Okay, and the coefficient of variation is divided by the mean. So, it, it, and it's unweighted. So, in this case, all countries count the same. This, this is telling us that the variance the between country variability is, has gone down in this group and stays, has been stable. A, a divergent story will probably have uh, an explosion of this, an increase of the variance, which we don't see for PTFR, okay? So the second point is cohort fertility, and here, even if the database is great, uh, we still don't have a, a kind of a much longer series. So I'm basically looking at the cohort, uh, the 44 cohort up to the 65 cohort, and there is beta convergence. So basically, countries where cohort fertility start higher have the quickest fertility decline. What about sigma convergence? Is there a sign of a great divergence? Oh, maybe yes. Maybe if we look at cohort fertility, this is the standard deviation of cohorts. After the initial convergence with declining differences, there seems to be a, an increase of uh, variability between countries. Thank you. 
So basically, there is this evidence that for beta convergence and a lack of sigma convergence, so uh, countries are not necessarily becoming like each other, in particular if we look at uh, uh, cohort fertility. I'm skipping the other bits. Uh, maybe it's too early to see convergence. And if divergence is conditional, will conditional factors change? So will country become more gender equal? Will social capital spread in countries that have low social capital? And then, I, what I, I mean, this is just a very simple analysis. One cannot really test what are the alternative theories. It's very important to think about this because it has strong implication on, on future, on the other passion of one of the other passions of Wolfgang, which is basically the UN has this as in the as basically a convergence idea. The same fertility model applied to the whole world. The, the, the Wittgenstein projections have more or less the complete opposite idea. You reason country by country and then you, you work uh, from that onward. So in the end basically the model is a model of persistent divergence. So we probably need to have more analysis, and there's been a very nice, I mean, the paper by Thomas, uh, uh, Sobotka, Zeman, and, and Basten at, at the UN, look at this uh, analysis from, a, from this convergence lens. So I don't think we have thought carefully about these ideas, and there are these two completely uh, antithetic approach, a kind of a global approach, and a country level approach, as, as, in, uh, as always there is an in-between solution. So let me say, let me conclude here, I think this is maybe the same, similar picture to the one Thomas said, and say uh, happy birthday to Wolfgang. Uh, given it's my last talk from, uh, uh, from Oxford, I thought, okay, I'll, I have also. Wow. <laughs>